identify typical and atypical ribs and give me the reasons for your identification. This is the atypical one because it has only one articular facet. And this is a uh, typical one. It has two articular facets. This is one and this is two. And this is also a typical one. It has two articular facets. One, two. And this is also a typical one. It has two articular facets. One, two. This is a atypical one because it has one articular facet. What is thoracic inlet? The junctional area between the structures of root of the neck and the contents of the thoracic cavity. Tell me the boundaries of it. Anteriorly, the upper board of manubrium sterni on each side, first rib and its cartilage. Posteriorly, the superior surface of first thoracic vertebra. Select the first thoracic vertebra and describe it. This is the first thoracic vertebra. It, it, this is the body of the vertebra and it is not heart shaped. It resembles the body of a cervical vertebra and body has a superior articular facet which is complete which articulates with the head of the first rib and an inferior facet which is, which is a demi facet and the spine is thick, long and nearly horizontal and these are the transverse processes they have costal facets and these are inferior articular processes these are superior articular processes what are the ribs attached to it first rib and second rib get the second rib and compare it with first rib this is the second rib it is uh, approximately twice as long as the first rib it is much less curved uh, and than the first rib and it is not twisted as first rib what is the main unusual feature you can see in the second rib the roughened tuberosity on its superior surface which forms part of the origin of serratus anterior muscle how can you surface mark the second rib what is the importance of that surface marking? First, we should identify the sternal angle. Then, the finger should pass directly either to right or to left. Then, there is the second costal cartilage and the second rib. After the identification of second rib, all the other ribs can be identified from that point. What is the nerve supply of serratus anterior? Long thoracic nerve. Do you know any bone in the thorax that we can use to get a bone marrow biopsy? Yes, sternum. How ribs are attached to the sternum? Tell me the joint types. Ribs are attached to the sternum by costal cartilages. They form sternocostal joints. The joint between first costal cartilage and the sternum is a primary cartilaginous joint. The second to seventh costal cartilages attached to sternum by forming synovial joints. What is pericarditis? What happens in it? Due to an inflammation of serous pericardium, excessive fluid accumulates between two layers of it, parietal and visceral layers. It compresses the atria, interfering the filling of the heart. What do you call to the procedure we use to aspirate this fluid? Paracentesis. Can you briefly tell me about the blood supply of the heart? Arterial supply is provided by right and left coronary arteries, which are the branches of ascending aorta. Left coronary artery supplies the most of left atrium and ventricle, anterior two-thirds of the ventricular septum, an area of right ventricle to the right of intraventricular groove, right bundle branch and left bundle branch. Other parts of the heart get their arterial supply from right coronary artery. 
most of the venous drainage of the heart wall pass to the right atrium via coronary sinus which is made from greater small and middle cardiac veins some of the blood drains to right atrium via anterior cardiac vein rest of the venous blood drain directly to the heart chambers by small veins called vena cordis minimi from what germ layer does the heart develop from mesoderm what is the most common congenital cardiac malformation ventricular septal defect